Hi, I'm engineer Abraham Aritiri, and you're welcome to the Yanes Tim Lecture Hall, your channel for amazing science experiments, epic DIY inventions, spectacular handsome craft activities that you can do right at home. In today's team challenge, we shall be learning about weather science. We shall explore wind and discuss wind speed and direction. Wind speed refers to how fast the wind is blowing at a particular time. The speed of wind can be measured using an instrument called a wind gauge or an anemometer. In today's team challenge, we shall be making a trick of wind gauge. It uses the three cups to catch the wind. Can you see this? This causes the device to spin. Wow! Can you see this? It's moving! Wow! So we can tell how fast the wind is blowing by counting how many times the device turns or spins like this. Can you see that green mark on the cup? We can use that as a yardstick to count how many times it spins. Now we say one, two. Now it's lower this time right now. We can also increase the speed of the wind by doing this. Can you see this? It's blowing faster. And it's spinning faster because the wind is actually stronger right now. And it can spin faster yet more again like this. Can you see that? So this is how the wind gauge or anemometer is used to determine the speed of the wind. So join us now as we make an anemometer for our wind gauge for this very same challenge. Okay guys, we're set to make our wind gauge right now and then we need our materials. First we need your plastic cups, about six of them should be okay. You need your cutter, all right, and then you need a pen for your drawing, for your ruling. You need a pin, a thumbtack of pin. You need some chopsticks, about um, three, four of them should be okay. You need a straw or two, one or two straws should be good to go. You need a knife also, a scissors, a plier, and then you need your gum. You can use either your glue gum, as you can see me use, or you can use the uhu gum or the top gum. And now we are good to go. And now the process we're gonna follow right now is this. Okay, the first step is to cut out two circular discs from your carton. You're cutting two and you first of all roll out or you draw out the circle. You can use a pair of compass if you have one and measure according to what you want to use but you should be large enough, okay? As you can see, I'm using my pen to trace out a circle which I've already cut already. You're going to be cutting two of that, alright? So as you can see, I've cut out two pieces of the circles, okay, of the circular discs from my pattern. And next, you want to use your gum to stick the two circular discs together, okay? You use a gum, like I say, you can use your uhu gum, but I am using my glue gum because it's quite faster. You can go ahead to buy a glue gum, that's fine, okay? But you can use your uhu gum too to stick them together like that, and then you put a hole in the center of the disc. You put a hole in the center of the disc. Now, remember you have, you use a pair of compass. You should be able to know the center of the disc with your pair of compass. So put a hole right there, a small hole that is small enough to hold your straw in place. A hole small enough to hold your straw in place. Okay, you're making a hole on um, the side of a straw. And then don't forget that you can use your pen to make your hole. And don't forget, you must not let the pen stick out of the cotton. Just um, have the pen um, get a hole in there and not to stick through the cotton, okay? Yeah, just like that, all right? Yeah, I've got my hole right now that our straw can go into. All right, next you wanna put the straw to check and be sure that it actually sticks through, actually fits in place. Can you see that? It actually sticks in place. But remember, the straw does not go through the hole. It only sticks on top of the cotton. All right, next you want to get a plastic cup and make a hole in the center of the plastic cup, all right? You get a plastic cup and make a hole in the center of the plastic cup, okay? The hole should be small enough to fix a straw in place too. I repeat, the hole should be small enough to fix a straw in place. 
which means the whole size should be equal to the size of a straw, all right? Now we just use a pin to um, poke through that cup. Now we're using a chopstick to poke through also to get a bigger. We're trying to get the size of a straw, okay? To get the size of a straw. All right, we're trying to get a hole in there right now. So I wanna use my scissors to just expand the hole, okay? Remember, the hole must be small enough to hold your straw in place, okay? That's what you're trying to target, the size of a straw to be the size of the hole you're gonna place in the cup. And then you can see, I'm trying to get my, with my scissors right now, expanding it, okay? So that's for that. Can you see it? Okay, the next thing, you wanna put your cup over your straw, all right? You wanna put a cup over the straw like this, all right? You're gonna be doing that gently and ensure that the straw is visible and sticking out of the cup. Can you see that? And the cup gets down the bottom of the cutter. Can you see that? Yeah, just like that. Cool, right? Okay. Now, the next thing you wanna do is to grab another plastic cup and make three holes on the side, all right? You're making three holes on the side. You wanna use your pin to, first of all, um, pierce a little hole through, okay? Remember, you're making three holes on the side. Three. Okay, you grab another plastic cup and then make three holes on the side and then show the holes are 120 degrees apart from each other. And that means you want to get your protractor and measure 120 degrees apart from each other, okay? Yeah, we're doing that right now. As you can see me do, I'm putting my hole with a thumbtack pin on the cup and ensuring that these are 120 degrees apart from each other. All right, so don't forget that you have to make the holes to be 120 degrees apart, okay? Apart from each other, 120 degrees. So from one hole to the other hole should be 120 degrees. You get your protractor and you try to measure that 120 degrees. And then when you're done with that, the next thing you want to make another hole at the bottom of the cup, all right? and you insert a chopstick into the hole, okay? So make another hole at the bottom of this same cup and insert a chopstick into the hole. Now I'm trying to make my my, my pin, as you can see right now. I'm trying to get my hole, okay? Carefully do that and then insert the chopstick into the cup, into the hole like this. Can you see that? Yeah, cool, right? Okay, I'm trying to carefully do that. As you can see me do right now. Okay, as you can see guys, I have fixed my um, chopstick through the hole of the cup. And you can see just a part of the chopstick point was put through, as you can see. And next, I want to put the chopstick into the straw. But first, I need to check for the height of the straw and check if it's actually 21 centimeters. Okay, as you can see guys, I'm trying to measure 21 centimeters with my ruler, as you can see. Okay, that's 21 centimeter, and then you mark the point on the straw and cut off the 21 cm point. Okay, and I'm cutting off right now. Okay, and I'm good to go, right? All right, next you want to take three plastic cups, okay, and then you put holes in them. All right, you're gonna put two holes in each of them, just like this, and the holes should be opposite each other at one end and the other end opposite each other, like this. Okay, the same thing in the second one. And then, the same thing in the third one. You're doing putting two holes with your pin, okay? Two holes in each of the cup with your pin. All right. All right, next you wanna put the Mac on the back of one of the cups, all right? This will enable you to keep track of the number of rotations and um, be able to know the, how to measure the wind speed. So you simply draw a circle on a sheet of paper using the size of the back of the cup and then you cut it off with your scissors. And then having done that. Okay. We're almost ready with our set little circle, okay, which acts as a mac on one part or one of the cups. And now just use my gum to place the um, paper or the sheet of paper circle shape on the back of one of the cups, okay? 
is going to act as a marker so we can count the speed or how many times the cups are rolling around like that when we start when it starts working as you can see i've placed my mark on one of the cups right now okay so right now let's go over to something else right let's go back to the previous cup we just um, did okay now the other cup which we inserted the, the, the chopsticks into remember we did three holes in that cup and we used um, a distance of 120 degrees in between the holes now you want to put the chopsticks in each of those holes at the side but first you want to cut some uh, parts part of the chopsticks to make it shorter so it can reduce the weight of the bottom of the cups on um, on this very one to just reduce the size a little or reduce the length a little as you can see me do right now okay and the same size you go for the three different chopsticks which you'll be putting at the side of this cup okay okay my three um chopsticks are ready i've cut them to, to size just to make them shorten a little so avoid too much weight now you want to put the chopsticks one after the other on the holes which you actually placed, I mean the three holes you placed that were 120 meters apart, you want to place the sharp points of the chopsticks, okay, in the hole. Can you see the hole right now? Okay, you want to place it from inside out like that, okay, and you can see me do that, you just carefully do this so you don't get pierced with the chopstick, please be careful while doing this part of it to avoid being injured to avoid any form of accident okay now i got that chopstick already pierced through i want to put a second chopstick in the second hole remember we did the holes were meant to be 120 degrees apart from each other okay so we have just three holes that are equally spaced around the cup okay so i have the second one fixed there and the third chopstick goes right into the third hole as you can see we have just three holes and they are spaced 120 degrees apart from each other okay and recall we're putting them the sharp points are going from inside out okay all right now we're almost set right now again and the next phase is that you want to put each of the cups you just um the three cups you just um use right now you want to put each of the cups through the chopsticks okay now you're going to pierce that one through the sharp points from that hole okay and to run right through the second hole just like that okay yeah we're getting it right well thank you piercing through the other hole just like that okay cool right yeah very cool okay so we got that right now pierce through as you can see and then just I'm trying to make sure it's firm. And I want to put a second cup right now on the second straw in the same way. You pierce through the first hole and then the sharp pointed chopstick pierces through the other hole too. All right. And that means your holes must be straight. Okay. Must be straight across each other on the cup. As you can see, they are straight across each other on the cup. All right, now let's do our third hole right now in the same way. We'll fix it like that in the same way. All right, guys, we can see right now I've just fixed the three cups. Oh my God, at the sides of the central cup. Wow, we're almost good to go. Now, next, okay, you want to put some, some gums in those joints where you have the holes and where you have the straws passing through the cups to ensure it's actually firm. As you can see me do, I'm using my um, glue gun. You can use the Uhu gun too. But like I said, it's actually faster and more efficiently when you use the glue gun. Okay, I have that right here. My um, gums already on the holes where the chopsticks pass through. And next you wanna, um, I guess, ensure that when you put your gum, you um, wait for about some five, 10 minutes to see to it that it's dried enough. Because if it's not dried, it's gonna be bent, all right? You wanna make it stable and straight. So I wanna wait right now for mine to get dried, as you can see. Okay, let's wait now. Okay, guys, mine is already straight. As you can see right now, I have to wait for my gum to get um, dried first. And now I'm ready to put my, my chopstick into the straw like this. Can you see that? Yeah. And our nanometer or wind gauge is ready. Woo! Can you see that? And that's how to make a wind gauge 
used to measure the speed of wind. All right, guys. Now I want to see, okay, guys, and we're good to go right now. So I want to test our um, wind gauge and see if it's working. All right, let's see how we can do that right now by um, getting a, a, an air or wind through a fan. Okay, let's see how it goes, if it's gonna work or not. We're gonna know that right now. Okay, can you see that? Wow, it's working. So our wind gig is working and now uh, you can see how many times it rotates. You can actually see the mark of the um, lemon paper on it and that can show you how many times it's gonna go around to calculate the number of revolutions it's gonna make per circumference or per time, all right? So that's how to make a wind gauge and this is weather science. I wanna see your videos of your, um, ex of your uh, invention of the wind gauge you send to us and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and then to also follow us on our Instagram page too as well as our Facebook and then um, on Twitter. Thank you so much for being part of this class today. Have a wonderful day, bye bye.